Hello again, space fans. Look where we've landed today. It's everyone's favorite pla <coughs> dwarf planet. It's everyone's favorite dwarf planet. It's Pluto. Come on, you know you love Pluto. No, not that Pluto. This Pluto. Pluto is an icy dwarf planet in the Kuiper Belt, a ring of bodies belonging the orbit of Neptune. It was the first Kuiper Belt object to be discovered, and it is the largest known dwarf planet. Pluto was discovered by Clyde Tomba, right in this building in 1930 at the Lowell Observatory in Flagstaff, Arizona. It was originally classified as the ninth planet from the Sun. After 1992, its status as a planet was questioned following the discovery of several objects of similar size in the Kuiper Belt. In 2005, Eris, a dwarf planet in the scattered disk, which is 27% more massive than Pluto, was discovered. This led to the International Astronomical Union to define the term planet formally in 2006 during their 26th General Assembly. That definition excluded Pluto and reclassified it as a dwarf planet. And many hearts were broken. Many of Pluto's fans came out in the defense of the recent demotion and protested the IAU's decision. But predominant science figures came out in support of the demotion. As per the IAU, they defined a planet as a celestial body that is in orbit around the sun, has sufficient mass for its self-gravity to overcome rigid body forces that it assumes a hydrostatic equilibrium, a nearly round shape, and has cleared the neighborhood around its orbit. Pluto fails to meet the third condition. Its mass is substantially less than the combined mass of all the objects in its orbit. As you can see, Pluto is very small. Being so far out into the solar system, Pluto is considered to be a dwarf planet. The solar system consists of four terrestrial planets and four gas giants. Then, beyond Neptune, we have what is known as the Kuiper Belt, and in this region is where Pluto orbits. Pluto's orbital period is currently 248 years. This means, since its discovery, it hasn't made its full journey around the Sun, and it won't until 2178. Its orbital characteristics are substantially different from those of the planets, which follow nearly circular orbits around the Sun, to a flat reference plane called the ecliptic plane. In contrast, Pluto's orbit is moderately inclined, therefore is referred to as elliptical. If we take a look at Pluto using the NASA Eye software, we can learn so much. As you can see, Pluto is moving further away from the Sun every second. And it's year 90,530 Earth days. Alright, let's take a look at Pluto's interior. So Pluto in a nutshell has a rocky core, a watery ocean, an icy surface, and nitrogen atmosphere. As we look at the core of the rock inside Pluto, it has likely settled into a core surrounded by a thick shell or a mantle of ice, and is estimated to be about 70% rock and 30% ice. A gassy insulating layer probably keeps Pluto's liquid water ocean from freezing solid. The case for a subsurface ocean on Pluto is bolstered by the location of Sputnik Planitia, a 600 mile wide plane of nitrogen ice that forms in the left lobe of the dwarf planet's famous heart. Water ice is Pluto's crustal bedrock, and studies show exposed water ice is considerably more widespread across Pluto's surface than was previously known. Pluto's icy bedrock is well hidden beneath a thick blanket of other ices such as methane, nitrogen, and carbon monoxide. The New Frontiers program was developed and advocated by NASA. Future missions were to include planetary science and the New Horizons mission was born. The primary mission was to perform a flyby study of the Pluto system in 2015, and a secondary mission to flyby and study other Kuiper Belt objects. It is the fifth space probe to achieve the escape velocity needed to leave the solar system. New Horizons was engineered by the John Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratory and the Southwest Research Institute. New Horizons' body forms a triangle almost two and a half feet thick. The spacecraft carries seven instruments, three optical instruments, two plasma instruments, and a dust sensor. 
On January 29, 2006, New Horizons lifted off from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station and began its mission to Pluto. If the launch were to be delayed at any time past the first 23 days of 2006, they would have missed a Jupiter flyby and would have flown at a slower trajectory, causing a five-year delay. After a nine-year wait and already several flybys and a vast collection of data, New Horizons made its closest approach to Pluto and passed within 7,800 miles with its closest approach on July 14, 2015. Once the New Horizons team received the data, they were displayed with an amazing sight. First clear images of Pluto. Isn't it amazing? Even the public had fun with some of the images. Photos were not the only reason New Horizons made a 3,462 day journey across the solar system. We were able to learn so much about the planet because of the New Horizons mapping instruments. The plains on Pluto's surface are composed of more than 98% nitrogen ice with traces of methane and carbon monoxide. Nitrogen and carbon monoxide are the most abundant on the face of Pluto. The mountains are made of water ice. Sputnik Planitia, the western lobe of the heart, is a thousand kilometer wide basin of frozen nitrogen and carbon monoxide ices divided into polygonal cells, which are interpreted as convection cells that carry floating blocks of water ice crust and sublimination pits toward their margins. There are obvious signs of glacial flows both into and out of the basin. It is absolutely amazing how we can learn so much about a celestial body so far from Earth. Because of the New Horizons mission, we have learned so much. We've gone from a pixelated photo of a body that was once called a planet to learning so much about what can lie in the outer edge of our solar system. Scientists are still learning more about our little favorite dwarf planet. And while some NASA scientists believe it could be a planet again one day, we will just have to wait and see what more we learn about Pluto in the future. Until then, be curious, be creative, and always look up.